So this evening, I wanted to talk about spontaneity. And I spontaneously feel I have to share with you, you know, we like to keep you informed of all that's going on here at the North Hollywood Church. So as we were coming into the sanctuary this evening, I just have to let you know there is a dove perched on, you know, we have those five round poles outside our sanctuary doors. And there's a dove just perched on one of those poles, just hanging out, the symbol of peace. We were walking in and out, and he or she is just sitting there watching us. It was so sweet. So welcome. Welcome to all the uh, events here in North Hollywood. So spontaneity. One of the wisdom teachings that comes out of the uh, Kabbalah, which is uh, the Jewish, um, it's a mystical branch of Judaism, is this idea that God is the ultimate paradox. That God is everything because, like science of mind, uh, Kabbalah teaches that the nature of God is in everything and everyone, and yet God is nothing. In the sense that no single thing can fully represent what God is, because God being infinite, although God's nature is in all things, no one thing can fully represent what God is. And so in looking at this, I was looking at the idea that every faith tradition, including ours, emphasizes a lot of repetitive type of practice. You know, we, we, we promote regular prayer, re repeated practices of affirmations, meditation at least once a day, study, being of service, tithing. These are things that we suggest we do on an ongoing, regular basis because these practices help us to expand our consciousness for a greater experience of God's nature in our life. So if we go to that idea of the paradoxical nature of God, we can say that there's great value in being able to do something repetitively. But, on the other hand, there's also tremendous value and the importance of practicing spontaneity. Is that an oxymoron, practicing? Or, uh, because if it's spontaneous, do you pra Well, whatever. To, to be spontaneous on um, a regular basis. Before getting into the values, spontaneity, I want to go back and look at the value of repetition, because one of our core tenets in this teaching is change your thinking, change your life. It's a simple concept. Even before we came into Science of Mind, I think most of us understood the concept that, oh, when I see that in a different way, I have a different experience, and we're all about changing those limited um, life-inhibiting beliefs that we carry into more life-affirming positive ones. So it's a simple concept, but it's not necessarily easy. You know, some of the thoughts and beliefs that we carry about lack and limitation, the I'm not enough, I'm not worthy of love, there isn't enough, this can never happen for me, other people maybe, but not me. Very often those are deep-seated beliefs. And a one-time, even if it's said with great conviction, a one-time affirmation like, I am lovable and I am loving, I am an expression of God, even said with conviction, that won't necessarily shift years of thinking of ourselves being unlovable or not being able to love others under certain conditions. Have you noticed? I'm not saying it's impossible, we're in the realm of infinite possibilities here. But I would say that most of the time, we need to keep reminding ourselves of that truth over and over again. You know, science has actually shown that our habitual thought patterns create neural pathways in the brain. And to change those neural pathways, to adopt new ones, to change our thinking to change our lives takes repetition. It takes a rewiring of the brain. 
I love the old saying that practice makes perfect. It's based on the idea of repeating something over and over to master a new skill or behavior allows us to, to get to that higher level. In an article I was reading on the neuroscience of behavioral change, and it was talking about people trying to acquire a new skill and become really masterful at that skill. It stated that as patients participate in new activities, they're training their brains to create new neural pathways. The pathways get stronger with repetition until the behavior is the new normal. In terms of repetition, it's estimated that it takes 10,000 repetitions to master a skill and develop the associated neural pathway. Okay, shall we quit right now? 10,000. <laughs> the principle applies to adopting a new mindset. Um, I don't buy into the 10,000 repetitions because I know I have shifted many thoughts and, be thought and behavioral patterns through lots of repetition, but I don't think it came anywhere near 10,000. So we commit to these practices to adopt a new mindset, even when we feel like, you know, <laughs> it's such a drag. It's so difficult. I don't feel like it today. We feel the impulse of love, the impulse of God, for a greater realization, greater knowingness of itself. And we push through the resistance that we might have to some of those practices. And so we go back to our meditation chair. We go back to you know our practice of journaling, of writing our gratitude to journal, whatever it is. But the other side of this is that repetitive behaviors, habits, can also constrict us. And I don't think that's coming as a big surprise to anyone, that while we can uh, commit to repetitive practices to adopt healthier habits, healthier life-enhancing ways of being, habitual routines can also limit us. You know, we get used to things being a certain way, doing things a certain way, and it, in that, we can develop a mindset that's not able to see possibilities outside of what we're accustomed to. It gets to the point sometimes that, as we say, we become so set in our routines that even when something is painful or difficult for us, rather than look at a different way, open to a new possibility, that there are those of us who will pick familiar hell over unfamiliar heaven because it's new, it's unfamiliar to us. So in that way, repetition of something that doesn't necessarily keep us open to other possibilities uh, can be a hindrance to our sp spiritual uh, evolution. I would venture to guess that we've all had some experience of spontaneously just deciding to do something out of the ordinary and feeling the excitement of it, the joy of it, and, almost a, a sense of freedom. I bet as I'm talking about that, that each of you is able to think of some time that you did that, oh, that was, that, that felt fun to just break out of the routine and do this. And that's because, you know, God's nature in us is infinite. There are infinite ways that we can experience love, joy, beauty, abundance, wholeness, health, all all those qualities that we associate with God. And God is always seeking an expanded realization and experience of itself through us. So as finite expressions of the divine, we certainly can't be all of the different iterations of what God can be as an expression of love or beauty or any of the other God qualities. But and, and I don't believe we're intended to, or there wouldn't be so many other uh, emanations in, in creation in the manifest universe. But I think the divine is always 
seeking new ways to experience and express itself through us. And so as much as certain routines may serve us, switching them around periodically, changing them all together, opens us to new possibilities. I know in um, my corporate experience, very often we were encouraged to think outside the box. That's a term I'm sure all of us have heard. And we understand the idea of try to think in some new way, think of a solution that is so different from anything else we've ever considered. And I think that's very much in keeping, that idea keep, is in keeping with the science of mind concept of expanding our consciousness. Now, thinking outside the boxes, think of the boxes, your consciousness, your set of beliefs and patterns that's willing to expand to some new way of being, new, new way of thinking. Breaking out of our habits, being spontaneous, even in little ways, develops that part of our mind that's open to new possibilities. You know, simply taking a different route on your way to work. I think I reverted to my days back in Canada. Did I just say route? <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> okay. Pronounce a word differently from the way you're, <laughs> you're accustomed to. Switch up a breakfast food. Incorporate a new exercise into your routine. Now, I remember one day I had an issue that I was dealing with. It was a, a personal matter. I was already working here at the church, but that it had been on my mind to find a solution to this issue, and I just, nothing was coming to me. And as I was driving home, I lived over the hill at that time in West Hollywood. As I was driving from the church back to my place, I was going along Laurel Canyon, and you know, I noticed a side street. It just caught my attention, and I thought, I don't have to be home at any time, particular time. Why don't I just take this side street? I have no idea where it goes. And it was one of those, I wound up from one street to another to another, but I was seeing all these beautiful homes. I got these views of LA that were spectacular. My mind just went completely away from the issue of the problem, just opening up to enjoying this whole new experience. And stepping out of the mindset of, oh, what's, what's the answer to this problem or whatever, for a moment, and just having a new experience, I got home and all of a sudden the solution came to me. And I absolutely know that it was because I was willing to just break out of a routine, break out of my quote unquote rut, and experience something spontaneously. And so what I'd like to encourage us to do is the core nature of God being love what if we looked at, over the next week, what are some spontaneous, way, spontaneous ways that we might be able to express love for ourselves and love for others? Just some new way, something we wouldn't normally do. Now, again, thinking about it, and saying, well, what might I do? It's not maybe as spontaneous as just, you know, it coming to you in the moment, but we're trying to adopt a new mindset of being willing to do things differently, see things a bit differently. So we might just think of some possibilities and then act on one when it feels right in the course of the day. But what if like every day we at least tried to do one thing that was a spontaneous or a different from our routine, act of love for ourselves or love for others. And it doesn't have to be anything big. So I actually, I want to tell you, I Googled, you know, just some ideas of spontaneous acts of kindness for others and for self. Can I tell you the number I had to just strike from the list to go, eh, not in times of COVID-19 and social distancing. However, 
that allows us to be spontaneous and think of other new ways. You can still give a stranger a compliment, you know, from six feet away, but you can give a stranger a compliment. What about calling someone you care about that you haven't spoken to in a long time? Let a coworker know how much you appreciate them. Give a favorite book or something that you really like to a friend. Just say, you know, I, I've always enjoyed this and I think you might enjoy it. Let someone get in front of you in the store or on the road. Hmm, yeah, might not want to do that, but just think of spontaneously doing that for someone. Treat someone to a cup of coffee. You know, maybe it's someone six feet behind you at uh, Starbucks. Send someone a uh, thinking of you written note or they have these e-cards that you can send. Leave a nice notice on someone's car. Pick up the tab for a stranger's meal. How about complimenting a parent on their child's behavior? Do you know how much parents would appreciate that? <laughs> it's really, that could be just such a little gift, but it's, it's just thinking about how can I take this vibration of love and just express it in some new way, some way that I wouldn't routinely do toward others. And when it comes to you know, finding some new ways to express love for ourselves, well, you know, what do you like to do creatively that maybe you don't do very often? Just sing. Do you want to sing in the shower, dance, draw, just for the fun of it, not, not to become you know, some world famous artist, just for the fun of it, for yourself. Watch the sunset or the sunrise. Build a pillow fort. I love that. I saw that. Do I have enough pillows? I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> Snuggle with your pets. Give yourself a 30 minute time out. Buy yourself flowers. Take a bubble bath. I actually, that was one of my practices periodically. And boy, did I feel like I was, oh, are you pampering yourself? because I, I, I'm more of a shower guy, and that just always felt very special. Listen to music that feeds your soul. Get together with friends via conference call, or televideo, or Zoom, whatever. Get together just for the fun of it, not because you're taking another class or attending another meeting. Just do it to get together and be silly and have fun. Try a new dish you've been curious about that you may end up not liking but just for the joy of saying you tried it and now you know. None of these things are what we would call, wow, that, that's going to take so much effort or, or planning or whatever, but that's just to open up the neural pathways, open up that part of the brain that is able to entertain new possibilities, to know that there's so many, so many ways for this divine nature in me to be expressed and experienced. So like I said, it doesn't have to be difficult. But when you put your attention consciously to doing something out of the norm for yourself or for others, you open yourself to that divine essence that's available to be experienced and expressed anytime in so many ways that you might not have thought of, but now you get to step into that experience. So let's take a moment to turn our attention in. And I invite you to bring your awareness to some routine habit. Might just be the order in which you do things before you go to bed. And think about, what if you switch that up a little? And if any discomfort comes up, just notice that discomfort, but allow yourself to also feel the freedom of being able to switch something up just for the sake of trying it. Just for the experience. And now ask yourself, what's some simple way I might express love and kindness to someone that I might not 
do in or express in that way habitually? What's some, some act of kindness that I could share with someone that is just not my normal way of doing things? And even as you entertain that thought, notice the vibration of love that's there right now, seeking to be experienced and expressed in a new way. And now think of some non-routine, simple act of love, self-care that you might do for yourself. Again, as you think of it, notice the vibration of nurturing love that's there right now, seeking to be experienced and expressed in a new way. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any habitual patterns that inhibit your experiencing and expressing your divine nature in new ways. And follow that up by setting your intention to embrace a greater sense of limitless, absolutely limitless new ways that you can call forth your divine nature bring it forth into expression and experience it more fully. And so knowing we can always bring our awareness back to this place, I invite you to stay with me in consciousness in this vibration of love as we join together in prayer in knowing the truth about some of the typical human challenges that we can be confronted with. Knowing that God is always, always present at the center of all that is, every being, every situation, through and as me, through every person gathered for this service, through every being everywhere throughout creation. I speak my word, absolutely knowing that this nature of God is changeless, birthless, deathless. It remains the one constant, even though through our human experience, we're continually facing change. Some change that we accept and we absolutely go with, but sometimes it is difficult, it is challenging. We may be confronted with fear. And so for those who are experiencing some challenge with change, let us absolutely know that at the center of their being lies this eternal, unchanging nature of spirit. And whatever the change is, whether it be the loss of a job, a change in a health condition, the loss of a loved one, we know that the vibration of God's nature, that love, is eternal. It is right there to be experienced and expressed in a new way. We know for those who have lost loved ones that that vibration of love continues to exist and they continue to remain connected and can feel comfort from that truth. Let us know for those who are experiencing any kind of physical challenges, any kind of dis-ease, or discord in the physical body or in the mental arena, sense of conflict, confusion, whatever, that the nature of God is perfect wholeness, perfect well-being, and it lies at the center of every being right here, right now. I know even in this time of this pandemic that there is a pattern of wholeness and health and well-being at the center of each one to heal and to also reveal the cure that we can all know that this was something that came to pass, that the vibration of God's health and wholeness is the truth of each one of us and is reestablishing itself where it is not being felt or known. Let us join in knowing that that nature of God is absolutely endless creativity, that there's this impulse in each of us to give and receive of that creative nature. And so 
I know for each one who might feel some sense of not being fulfilled right now, that there is that perfect way that they have to give that is absolutely cherished and loved and needed in this world and that they are guided to those perfect places to give of their divine nature in their unique ways and be absolutely valued and appreciated for it. I know that this nature of God is infinite. And so let us know together for anyone that is experiencing any sense of lack that that is just a temporary experience as they awaken to the truth that they are one with a source that is infinite. It is an infinite giver and receiver. As we know that for ourselves and others, we see an increase in our capacity to give and receive love, to be creative and to celebrate the creativity of others. In the area of finances, to know that we are one with a source that provides for our every need and that we receive to a degree that we can generously give back. And let us also remember that that nature of God is one of pure love that where there is any sense of unlovingness for ourselves, for others, that we know right here, right now, that love holds everything and everyone in love. And as we open to that idea where there is any sense of not being lovable, not being able to love, that dissipates and dissolves, and a greater ability to feel a sense of love for the self and for others comes forth. And so knowing that the impulse of love is for greater good always, let us now follow that impulse by setting our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, let us know that that impulse for greater good is the will of God. God is forever seeking a greater knowingness and experience and expression of itself throughout creation. And that presence and power of God is one that knows how to make anything out of nothingness. And so as we know that God is in every one of these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so as with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth, that I release this word, knowing it's already done in the mind of God. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And so uh, if you're 
hopefully seeing the link that comes up uh, to make a donation. If not, for some reason it's not there, or uh, if you have trouble, oh, it's not there. Okay, so <laughs> no worries about that. All you need to do is uh, go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that will take you to our donation page where you will be able to make your donations. And thank you, thank you so much for that. You can also call the church office, 818-762-7566 to make your donations over the phone with a credit or a debit card. And of course, uh, I know some of you still prefer to mail in your checks and that's, that's absolutely fine. We accept it all and we're so grateful for it all. And with that, let's join together in saying our affirmative statement together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to be multiplied abundantly. Thank you. So as we bring our service to a close, um, just wanted to, uh, as always, say thank you to everyone who is of service this evening. So here in the sanctuary, again, week after week, Wednesday after Wednesday, Sunday after Sunday, thank you, Adam, for being there to make sure we're seen and heard here. To Blair, who is here tonight, uh, working out all the Zoom, the technical stuff, and Doreen, who is on our second camera, thank you so much. Kevin, thank you for the beautiful, that was just perfect. And help did, help was on the way the whole time. <laughs> thank you, that was perfect. It's Sam, as always, week after week after week. <laughs> so grateful that we have you here as our musical director. Um, Want to say thank you to Terry, who is, has also been here, who's in the office to um, answer your calls for donations. Uh, we have practitioners Pat Wilson and Bob Lyon who are holding vigil for us this evening. Thank you to both of you for that. Melissa, once again, thank you for your support on Facebook Live. And to our Zoom team, I understand it's Lynn Romanowski and Brenda Johnson, uh, George, Brenda Johnson, Brenda Jordan, uh, who are uh, leading our Zoom team this evening. Thank you, thank you. And um, to all of you for continuing to tune in and to all of you who continue to support us financially so we can continue to be here to support you. Many, many, many thanks. Um, just a reminder that we will be here for 30 minutes uh, to be, take your donations over the phone. We will have prayer with the practitioner available on Zoom after service. Just if you're on Facebook Live right now, join us on Zoom. You can go to our website, nhcrs.org, to find that link. And we can connect you one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner for prayer 
uh, in a private breakout room. Uh, your email, your prayer requests that you'd like to submit, you can email to prayer at nhcrs.org or you can call the church office and select option four, which is Ministry of Prayer to leave us a message and that voicemail and the email address are checked every night so we can uh, make sure our practitioners know about those requests and are supporting you. Next week, my um, topic will be projection. So from being spontaneous to projecting, let's see where that goes. Uh, we infor invite you to stay informed about everything that's going on at the church through our website. Uh, I want to, do I want a tease for the concert? Of course I want a tease for the concert. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that was just, can I handle it? <laughs> oh, I, I love it when they make me practice what I preach. <laughs> so, yes, so, well, about that. So we as, we, as you know, we don't have gourmets for God this year, so we're gonna have, uh, thank you to Sam, who spontaneously came up with this uh, title, Grace Notes for God which will be a concert fundraiser, and uh, tickets will be going on sale this Friday. You'll have information about it on our, our website. Uh, we just hope you won't miss this opportunity for just incredible entertainment and also being able to support the church. So, okay, was I spontaneous enough? Okay, good. <laughs> um, 2020 Abundance Workshop with Dr. Mark is coming up on August 3rd through the 31st, so that'll be on Monday nights. You can register today on our website for this amazing five-week Zoom workshop based on the book, The Art of Abundance. And uh, it's ten, Art of Abundance, 10 Rules for a Prosperous Life by Dennis Merritt Jones. If you wanna grow your abundance consciousness, Dr. Mark is the guy to do it with cost for that is responsible giving. We'll have a course in miracles uh, tomorrow evening with practitioner Jeannie Laporte from uh, 7.15 to 9.15. And uh, we also have our virtual circle of healing via Zoom this Sunday at 1 p.m. I believe on Sunday I said it was 1.30. It's 1 p.m. But the information for that, um, all the other Zoom events that go on are on our website, nhcrs.org. Also, please know that before and after service, you can join us on the Zoom virtual patio so we can still connect as a community. So feel free to join us 20 minutes before or hang out with us, <clears throat> excuse me, for some time after the service so we can just visit. And I'll be on with you once I get out of the sanctuary. So uh, with that, again, Thank you for being with us. Thank you for continuing to support us. And let's turn our attention inward one more time. Giving thanks right here, right now, once again, for all the ways that we have been blessed by that presence of the divine this evening. I absolutely know that through everything that has unfolded, that Something has shifted in our consciousness for us to awaken to that vibration of God's goodness in each of us and to experience it more fully in our lives. So I give thanks for the healing and revealing that has occurred. I give thanks for this idea of exploring that spontaneity and how that carries us beyond this experience into our daily lives. It ripples out into the world and how it opens us up to more and more possibilities of how to experience and express that divine nature. And so in gratitude for all that we have received and how those blessings multiply, I just release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen.